Where did the story of Jesus start? It started 4,100 years before Jesus. It started with the story of Isis and who became pregnant by an immaculate conception, gave birth to her son Horus by a virgin birth. Horus, who at the age of 12, removed himself from his population and went further south into Egypt at the Grand Lodge of Luxor. At the age of 30 he returned and at the age of 33 he was murdered, cut up into four, uh, 14 pieces and so on and so on. If you look in what is called the Egyptian Book of the Dead and the Papyrus of Annie, you would see the same story. If you go to Egypt today, and by the way Egypt is in Africa the last time I looked at it on, June, on January the 9th, <laughs> unless it took a 747 and flew away. But if you should go to Egypt at a place called Abydos, there is a temple there, still there, partially in ruins. The temple of the Pharaoh Seti I, S-E-T-I-1. And there you will see, not only in the hieroglyphic writing that the ancient Africans wrote, but you will also see the picture form the Africans painted, they drew the entire story of the Immaculate Conception and the virgin birth story. The temple for the god Horus. And that's at a place called Edfu. And you see the entire story of the crucified savior there. On the walls and in the paintings and the ceilings and so forth. But if you look on the green side of your American dollar bill, you see the story I've just been speaking about. And the question is how did it get there? You see the ever seen eye of Horus otherwise known as the Ujet, U-D-J-E-T. And then you see around it the symbol of Amen-Ra. You say at the end of each prayer, Amen. Right. And somebody told you some lie that it means so be it. It never meant so be it and it still doesn't mean so be it. Right. Amen was the god of the north in Egypt. Ra, symbolized by the sun, was the god in the south. And when Egypt unified herself, they combined the God of the North and the God of the South into the one and thus Amen-Ra. A-M-E-N hyphen R-A. And the house of fire or pyramid, the Greek word P-Y-R-M-I-D, two words. Fire meaning fire or house and mid meaning the house. It is in this context then that the early people in Africa under the leadership of two Africans, one called Pantheus, P-A-N-T-A-E-U-S, and the other one called Boethius, B-O-E-T-I-U-S. Some 1983 years ago, having fell out with another branch of their own, decided to then reintroduce the concept of the Immaculate Conception, the Virgin Birth, the Murder and Resurrection of uh, Os uh, the Godhead, which late Os um, Horus, which later became Jesus, and so forth. But have anyone ever told you what we're speaking about is Christianity before Jesus? There are sixteen crucified saviors. Sixteen. Jesus being the 16th, the first being Horus, along the Nile, in the land from whence your ancestors came. When the Africans along the Nile there started to deal with the concept of deity, God, there was no Greece yet, and there was no Adam and no Eve. Because Adam and Eve is a concept, an allegory that came from the Hebrews, otherwise called Jews. The first of the Hebrews, Abraham, otherwise originally called Abram, A-B-R-M. Abraham or Abram was not born, born until 1675 before the Christian era or B.C. You cannot have an Adam and Eve before you have Abraham. Why? The Jews are the ones that introduced the concept 
of an Adam and Eve. You don't have any book older than your Bible, your Judeo-Christian Bible, whatever version, with the book of Genesis, no other people in the world ever mentioned. And the first Jew is Abraham. You don't have a single... His mama wasn't a Jew. His daddy wasn't a Jew. They said Abraham was the first of the Jews. Your own Bible says it. So then, anything about the beginning of the world must be something he thought of. He had no concept of it. In 1675, the Africans along the Nile were already in their 13th dynastic period. 13th dynasty. I'm not talking about the pre-dynastic period. Are we to say that the Africans here had no concept of religion before Abraham was born? When Abraham was born here, in the city of Ur in Chaldea, Ur in Chaldea, this Chaldea was already a colony of these Africans. These Africans calling themselves Elamites. E-L-A-M-I-T-E-S. So that even Abraham was born at a time when the Africans was controlling the state where he was born. The book of Genesis isn't written when Abraham is born. It isn't written until 700 BC at the Sanhedrin when Jewish scribes decided, and they did not even write the book of Genesis as the first book. They wrote the book of Exodus as the first book. But it looks silly to say that people are running from a place and they're not born yet. So at the council of, at the council of Jamia, at the council of Jamia, they change Exodus and replace it with Genesis, the same thing they did with Luke and Matthew. But in order for you to understand the development of the religion called Christianity, you must understand the source. First, we must know where Christianity started. The records show whether you are a Protestant, a Catholic, or what. That Christianity started here at a place called Alexandria with Pantheus and Boethius. That's in Africa, by the way. And that from there, it spread out. Right here at the island of Phile, P-H-P-H-A-L-A-E, Phile, is where they established the first monastery, the first Christian monastery right here. And this religion existed 134 years before it went this way. But it came into this land as the worship of what is called the Herculaneum worship of Isis. Because originally, it was the worship of an African woman. It will seem strange, it should seem to you, that the first worship, that man worship, was not a man. Not a god, but a goddess. The goddess Hathor. H-A-T-H-O-R. H-A-T-H-O-R. Hathor. Symbolized as a cow with a sun disc between her horn, which the Jews adopted and called the golden calf. The present Hindus adopted it and called it the sacred cow. When you go to Egypt right here and the western bank of the Nile, there is a temple at a place called Dendera, D-E-N-D-E-R-A-H, built in honor of Goddess Hathor, and you will see 3,500 faces on each of the columns and our places of this African woman. And that's why they will have you go to Mecca and to Palestine and to, I mean, Jerusalem and to to uh, Bethlehem, but never to Egypt, never to Ethiopia, never to, 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 to um, Nubia, to see the ancient tombs dug into the walls. I mean, when I say a tomb, this building is one less than a quarter the size of the average tomb. I'm not talking about an eight by five thing, where all the records are there. When you talk about this, the source of this, having come to uh, um, um, uh, Judaism, but where did Judaism get its belief source? The most ancient writing about the word heaven, the ancient Egyptian, the ancient Egyptian Africans call it Amenta. The opposite of that they call Abydos. In the Heretic writing, 
But when this was thousands of years, there was no Adam and Eve story yet, there was no Jew yet, there was of course no Greece yet. We don't have Greece. Doesn't come in history until 833 BC when Homer wrote the Iliad and the Odyssey. And Homer said that even the gods of Greece, the gods of Europe, the two first gods, Zeus and Apollo, came from Ethiopia. 